And I've been searching for that long before YouTube. I had a friend, I had a cohort in crime in that, somebody I knew that took care of his health. He knew a lot about minerals and vitamins and how they work in the body. And he knew a lot more than I did. I learned from him and then I grew up in a house talking about medicine and how that works in our bodies and I happened to take a great interest in anatomy and physiology and biology in school and from that I developed this big interest in how the body works and I've been able to figure out a lot of things. And then I try to find out what we need in my family, in my own house to stay healthy or to get rid of some symptoms that are look like a disease. And when I have experience with that, when I have success with that, then I share it with you on, at my magazine. I have a website magazine called Your Health and Tech Friend. It's an internet magazine that I started in October of 2010. And in order to bring that website alive, to put my, I brought a face to it by incorporating my face to it and using my own name, which is Nancy Gurish. And my license is as a cosmetologist, and that means I'm licensed to do your hair. So I don't give advice, I just share what I do. And then I share what works for me and for them, and I find out that colloidal silver works for the whole family. That's one thing that I don't ever want to stop taking is colloidal silver. And I found out that taking it in smaller doses is best. And what may be even better is not swallowing it, but simply swishing with it. And it'll absorb through the mouth into the bloodstream. And it does a lot of good in preventing, preventing troubles. I made some notes today. One thing I want to say is I'm a 62-year-old lady. And normally older women or men might have... Might have um, losing my things might have um a table full of some sort of pills next to them and i have a side table and a counter full of supplements and that's why i don't have to have a side table full of other kinds of pills i take vitamin and mineral supplements and it's not easy it's been a journey finding out what works and how to make it work right and what works with what other type of supplement what to take without food and with food and what to space apart and food in itself has been a, um, it's been a challenge for me. I wanna see if I wrote anything here. My gut is healed for real. My, my stomach lining is healed and I'll be at my, my larger channel at noon Eastern time tomorrow talking about that. Food is important and it's more and more important as you get older. And I find out that it's more important as you get older. Now some of the original medicines I share about hair too hair tips and I used a shampoo that I don't think was good this morning. It was watered down and it didn't didn't do good for me today. So I try to share on, I have a hair video that I put out every Tuesday last year and the year before. So I have a lot of those to share and I'll share them at my website. Now foods I rarely would never eat. The biggest one that I really feel the most strongest about, I'm going to hold for the end. And that's the one that um, it was the hardest, kind of the hardest one for me to give up. But what I have, the one, the two things that I most recently have let go of completely, as much as I can be aware of it, are soybean oil and canola oil. Those two things are bad, and I know why now. Because generally you'll find out that nothing is good for us. No, no foods are good. They're all going to have drawbacks. And... Um, but I want to know why, because I want to know the story. Soy isn't good for us unless it's fermented, like from soy sauce. And the way that our country introduces things is wrong. I chose soy formula for when I was uh, for my baby because the doctor in the mid 90s said that soy formula was the best. The pediatrician said that, and I bought it. I bought into it. I didn't know better, you know. So we try to do our best, and then as we find out, we do better, make corrections. But soy is not meant to be eaten the way our country has introduced it into our foods because we take everything and we take it to the extreme. You know, the soy milk and the soy, everybody was drinking, eating, I forget what it was even. Um, 
I can't remember what it was. If it was, oh, yogurt. Yogurt is dumb because yogurt is mostly sugar, you know. They, we give that to our kids and we think that it's healthy and people are wising up. They're getting smarter and smarter. So anyway, my top two are soybean oil and canola oil. And that's a challenge because finding a salad dressing that doesn't contain those is a big deal. Every, it seemed like almost every salad dressing in the store has soybean and or canola. And I found that out recently. My husband went on the keto genic diet and I was, I had to bake breads for him in order to get that the right types of flour and bread low glycemic and then we had to get away from soy part of the keto diet is getting soy out of your life and so I found out how to make certain salad dressings and they're really good and they're very simple there's a beverage that I haven't touched at all this is a never I haven't touched it in probably 13 years, maybe, diet colas. And I was a two to four liter a day diet Pepsi drinker. I love diet cola. And that was very hard for me to get rid of. That was an, finally, it was an addiction. I like coffee and I still drink my coffee, although I, I look, I try to drink uh, good filtered water and organic coffee when I, when I buy coffee, but I can't all the time. So price cost sometimes prohibits better food choices, you know, at other times. For me, that's been the case. So I drink coffee, but I don't touch Diet Coke. Okay, now I don't eat everything healthy. I'll tell you, maybe I'll tell you later what I had for brunch today, which is, um, but anyway, white bread and white flour. No, white, yeah, white flours and white rice. Now, white rice, I've made an exception here or there, especially at a Chinese restaurant, because I like Chinese food. So, but white bread, when I make an exception, it's because somebody will make hot dogs and the buns will just be there and they're, they're white bread. However, I'm beginning to see that I'm going to be able to make, make a switch pretty soon because I'm going to be considering white bread, including buns and hamburger or hot dog buns, as candy. And if I consider them as candy, I will very easily be able to just wipe them out of my diet because that kind of bread converts into sugar so quickly that it probably is worse than candy, especially because of the constitutional makeup of, the, of it is flour that is generally made from wheat that is processed that no longer contains the enzymes that it takes to digest it. And that's why you end up with things like leaky, leaky gut which then in turn turned sound like my dog, like my dog sighed. <laughs> like I've heard this enough. Leaky gut turns into leaky brain. What it is is the tissues in the body begin to break down, and that happens from things like white bread and even from other breads that we are we think might, that are healthy. They generally are not. Not unless you know the the source of the flour which pretty much means you have to bake the bread yourself or find a baker who's going to make healthy breads. So I'm going to think of it like candy. Um, white rice can be disguised in some, some restaurants. They might be called brown rice, but it's actually white rice that is colored brown. And when I found that out, I was like, you know, never ceases to amaze me. Then the most difficult. Okay, that's for last. What other foods? Because I know that where I fall short, I know where I don't eat properly. You know, there's many, many ways that I've been in that category of a not healthy eater. But there are ways. It's it's a journey. Discovering how to take care of your health and, and learning how to work with supplements is a process. And it's taken me several years, and I've finally come to a place where I'm more confident about some things than other others. And I do understand today what the truth is about cholesterol, the truth about star, starks, strokes, cardiovascular disease, and that type of stuff. It's I finally understand it. Okay. Now, white potatoes are like white rice and white bread. I recently bought, in last week's video, I talked about buying purple skinned potatoes, but I am generally sure, I got mascara on my finger, I am pretty sure that 
the potato and regardless of the color of the skin is going to be it's as acid content might be a little bit different i'll have to find out that's like carrots were really not orange they were colored orange i believe by the growers to make it more appetizing looking carrots aren't naturally orange it's just something you learn along the way table salt i try never ever to use table salt but again i make the exception if i'm out of sea salt and there's a cover a can of it in the cupboard i might use some what i buy table salt for the blue box i buy it in winter or to keep the ice off of the steps and off of the concrete because it won't damage the concrete like rock salt does so that's why i'll stock up on about five cans will get me through the winter and I'm outside sprinkling salt on my steps in my walkway. So now I cook aspartame and carbonation is one is the reason I gave up um, diet coke was because of the aspartame and the carbonation carbon that people are finally I'm finally beginning to understand the true extent of the harm that carbonation just does, just simply carbonation. But the aspartame was the one reason I was really, I really let go of the Diet Coke because, Diet Cola, because it was affecting my memory and my memory got better after I let go of it. Been off of it for quite a while. I quit smoking. I'm not a person who was, who, uh, lived a healthy, healthy lifestyle for a lot of years. For the majority of the first part of my life, absolutely all of the for 15 years after I turned 18, approximately whatever, up till I was 34 years old, I drank very heavily. I'm an alcoholic <laughs> in recovery for, in my 29th year of recovery. And up until I was 34, my diet was very less to be desired. <laughs> it was not good. And I was a heavy smoker. By the time I quit smoking, I was smoking four packs of cigarettes a day. And I quit about in somewhere like 98, 1998 or 99. I think it was 99. And it's 2018 right now. So there is always time to make changes in your life. It's never too late. What I feel about foods, there's are there's things that I never eat and sometimes things that I try to really avoid. I'm trying to read my notes here. That's done with that page. I have ADD, adult deficit disorder, and attention deficit disorder. And I have had OCD and I have learning disorders and that's my handwriting and it's better today than it was it's way better, but it was, it was really, I've had to make a big effort. I, I have to line paper myself. I use eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper, and this is way off topic, but I'll cut this out of the video later in case anyone comes later just to see this video for the foods. I'll have this section cut out. If you want to cut out, you can, and you can come back later. And then I'll just have this important stuff posted milk milk and most of all yellow cheeses i heard about yellow cheese being the bad type of cheese a long time ago or the less of less um i can't think of the word i want when i do eat cheese it's um uh, blue cheese on salads but i the less desirable cheese are the yellow ones okay they have the more more of the bad stuff in them the thing that's wrong with milk and cheese the whole thing that's wrong, the bottom line of it is that they're pasteurized. That's the first thing, okay? That's not even the first that in the life cycle of the cheese and the milk. But the bad thing is, is that it's pasteurized and then it no longer has the enzymes that are even required for even digesting it itself, which is the main point. I thought I was gonna, it was going to be, it might be enzymes that help to digest other things, but specifically they have their own enzymes for um, digestant digestion and they don't have it once they're pasteurized but the further part what is even further wrong with it is that the cows are their dairy cows for commercial foods are now now that's such that's a huge video all in itself it's a humanitarian thing because of the way the cows and the animals are treated but it's also what they're fed they aren't fed 
the foods that they're supposed to be eating, which probably is grasses. I'm a city girl, I'm city born and raised in. So I everything I learn about farms or farming, I have to learn. Cows are supposed to eat greens and feed on grass. And part of that is where they get the vitamin, where the vitamin D3 comes from or D that is found in milk and in cheese would come from the grass, which is getting it from its chlorophyll from the sunshine, from the sun, gets into the grass, goes into the cow, comes out of the milk, goes into the cheese. <laughs> we could put that to music. <laughs> but that's no longer there because they're feeding it grain. And cows don't have any business eating grain. Therefore, the meat we eat and the cheese and the milk, none of it is what it was supposed to be in the first place, whether or not we're supposed to be eating meat in the first place. Now, so for milk and cheese, I do eat blue cheese because I really like it on a salad. And then I, I have my one brand of salad dressing that doesn't have soybean oil or canola oil. And I don't use vegetable oil anymore or anything like that. Corn, I don't eat corn anymore. So that's another whole food. I, I wouldn't buy it or anything anymore. Some people and some labels say non-GMO corn. And I don't think that's really feasible. I don't think that is possible. If you are really aware of what has happened in our world, Bill Gates, Mr. Bill Gates owns a lot of the... Uh, seeds that are not GM, not genetically modified. He would have a seed for corn that doesn't have, that isn't modified genetically. But corn was one of the first foods to be genetically altered because they need to be able to receive the herbicides that have to be within the crop in order to keep, the, and the pesticides in order to keep those things off. They have to be able to receive these herbicides and continue to grow. And in order for that to happen, they, re they adjust the molecules, the molecular structure of the corn genetically in the seed so that what grows is no longer the corn that was the original seed that made up the, that made up the product known as corn. Well, they started removing chains from the molecules and as they as the bugs became resistant to these new herbicides, they did, they needed to just change the molecule of the corn so that it would continue the cycle of working. So that's what happened with, and there isn't any real GMO, non-GMO corn. So I just don't bother with it. And I would never touch a corn oil, oil or a vegetable oil, because that is generally, it's going to be a, I don't think oil is supposed to be turned into or corn, I don't think vegetables are supposed to be turned into an oil for consumption. And if you don't know about canola oil, that's a whole nother thing. I think it's banned in some countries, but not in ours, of course, not in the United States. I'm sorry, I don't know what country you're in. You're in several different countries. If you wanna tell me where you're from again, I asked that question in a video and I got responses from people and you're from all over. So first of all, I want another for all, another first for all, I want to say thank you for being here. I appreciate that very much. And I'll be able to interchange with you on comments pretty soon, either at this channel or in my other channel, as I get better at it. Every now and then I'll try to do that. And this one, I want to do this. So as for foods, now the biggest food that I've really taken out of my life to a huge degree and only made two exceptions to this is pork. And more and more people are aware that pork, of what pork is. I don't even like the word, but it contains, you know what? And I don't wanna get those in my body. I don't want pork anymore. And it's a, I think that's a very large pro problem for people in our society. The pork itself is not digestible it causes some obesity problems. It's at the root of some obesity problems, but it's at the root of a lot of disease and illness. Where I've fallen short with it has been if I've eaten a piece of pepperoni pizza and there's pepperoni on it, a lot of times I'll just take it off. But it, when I've been really hungry, I ate it and then I ate the pepperoni and I said, thank you. And I shouldn't have. And I more likely am not going to make that choice in the, from now going forward. 
And another place I made an exception was when somebody made hot dogs that were the cheaper brand, the not not all beef. And those are made with pork and chicken parts and all that kind of stuff. And that's the things we feed our kids. Some people, you know, a lot of people feed children all of these things that I talk about not eating myself. And today I know better. Today I know much better about that. And today a lot more people are getting more aware, very aware that children aren't just, there shouldn't be like kids food and then human adult food. It just shouldn't be that way. And I have pretty much understood a whole lot of that, um, thankfully, earlier on than I might have. You know, but I need, we need to come to a, to a place where we understand that I've seen a video that says this or articles that say sugar is not a treat. It's not a treat for food. It's a poison. It's a toxin because it harms the digestion. They begin to get their guts begin to get broken down early in life. And in their, our 20s, we're starting to show signs of arteriosclerosis, of hardening of the arteries. And that's because of all the foods that people generally think that they can consume when they're younger. Another thing is pop. Children shouldn't have pop. Most children shouldn't have most juices. All of those things that come easy and cheaper that are more affordable for families, all those things are no good, you know, and that doesn't make sense and it's just not fair. But hopefully we're getting more enlightened as a society, so, and in all countries, so we're, let's get together on this and make changes for ourselves. And I think that's all I need to say, unless by chance there's anyone here and they've left a comment. Let me check if there's a comment box. I can get that screen open. Chat. Oh, it should be right next to it. Nope, nobody. But I do get a lot of views on the this video channel, and I'm trying to increase my views here in order to spread my message about what I have to say to a larger audience and in many more ways. Now, since this is my spiritual walkway, I did have something for prepared to talk about. I have a passage to read from, this is my favorite daily, daily meditations book. Okay. I've had this for a long time. Since so February 22nd of 1989. It's got my name in there with my maiden name. There's my maiden name. Nancy Consilia. I've read this. I took a break from it for a while, but I love this book. There's I didn't hardly understand anything from this book when I started reading it. And then through the years, there's a, there's a passage and then there's a meditation, which includes a, a prayer or sometimes scripture. And then there's a short prayer at the bottom. And one piece from that today said, said on there, I rewrote it here. Dwell, let's see, dwell for a moment each day in a secret place, the place of communion with God apart from the world and thence receive strength to face the world. And that's what I do in the mornings. Now, more and more people, are, and when it comes to healing from the condition known as cancer, once you start to understand disease, your terminology about different illnesses is gonna, is gonna change. And there's a condition known as cancer. And more and more people are talking and speaking about healing from it using food. And part of the protocol is not just healthy food and really good water. They most all include prayer today, prayer and meditative time. And that's what that thing's talking about. Spend some time in quiet, in prayer with God each day. And that gives you the strength. That's where you gather the strength and you can gather the capacity to hold to hold all of the, the stresses and things that come up during the day to give you the courage to go forward through that day, the strength to hold up, the conviction, it'll give you peace. My meditative time gives me, I, I talked about it giving me Godfather power and it gives me a whole lot of peace. It's like an armor and people can't, nobody can penetrate that armor. It's really hard, to, it's tough. It's tough to penetrate that peace that you will get over time if you practice prayer. It works for me, and that's what I try to share at this Spiritual Walkway channel. Each of my four channels have a different focus. Peace, Buttercups. Peace.